Hey everybody, you hear Chris over on the side putting up insulation in the shed. I am going to mount the wind charge controller over here on the wall and connect the wind turbine here. Okay, now I'm going to connect the wires to the wind charge controller. I have battery clips on here for now. I just used some battery clip on ones and I'm just putting it on here so I don't short it against something and make fire, which we don't want to do. So, plus... Minus now, if I plug that in, we should get a power status indicator on the uh, wind. Actually, it's a solar charge controller being used for wind. So that should give us a status light. Okay, you can see the green light? Yes. So that is now powered up and it just kicked on the um, output, which I want to disconnect for right now because what it's doing now, I have to go in and see if I can find a rheostat settings in there because what it's doing right now is kicking on the um, output. So the batteries are at 14 and a half volts in absorption mode because the MPPT solar charge controllers are putting the batteries into absorption mode right now and the this charge controller here is a cheapo uh, but its settings are set to a lower voltage so it's trying to do to kick on the dump load through here which would go into the the heaters which I'll later put up but for now I have to disconnect that because you heard it click and it's trying to turn on the dump load which like I said I'm gonna have to get inside that device and change the dump load settings for the future but for right now I just want to start taking advantage of that excess wind power that we have coming in here I'm sorry I just wired that up I just took the big heavy heavy 10 gauge wire that comes from out on the um, from the wind turbine and taped it up to in tied it into the wires to the charge controller and now I gotta beautify the, the uh, cable I'm gonna put it up Chris is gonna put two nails up here for me to run that wire up um, along the wall here and get that out of the way and then later I'll zip tie everything neatly but for now that's uh, connected the wind charge controller is connected the wind turbine is powering uh, well, dumping power into the house when the wind blows. It's very gusty out here. It's never steady. It's very gusty. But it spins up now and then. Hey everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Just getting back from the dollar store, the uh, hardware store. <laughs> dollar store. I want to thank everybody um, for all the comments and all the help that I always get and advice. I was told to use this gator lock or such a type of quick disconnect coupling for the uh, PVC totes, the IBC uh, 275 gallon water tanks or IBC totes as there's otherwise called and this gator lock I was told will go on over the um, the threads he's the guy that's I forgot your name so forgive me but I want to thank you because I saw the comment and I ran right out to tractor supply and grabbed one said forget the threads this will go over the threads and clamp right on and work so check this out So Chris is taking my camera from me, alright, and check this out guys. 
So this goes right here. I'm gonna have to clean that a little bit. It goes right on there over the uh, over the threads. Push that on there, and you hear two happy snaps as that locks into place. And that is on there. That fits. I. This is it. This fits all the tanks that I have now. So this was a $10 adapter, and it fits all the tanks right there. Simple, quick, and it does seal. It's got a very tight seal, and I can see that it squishes on. I can see that it, it actually is squeezing and locking in against that um, the fitting of the tank. So there it is, everybody. All the tanks that I have, including the one I've been using for years, all I need is this gator lock to do the job. So whoever said that, thank you. We are hooked up and ready to go. We're going to hook up the tiny house on wheels. Hey everybody. Working on the plumbing here. So now I've got the adapters that come out of the tote, which then reduce down to the, uh, wow, that's surprising. Oh wow. That reduces down to the fittings for the tiny house on wheels. I guess only a plumber can open the PVC cement. So this goes down to PVC pipe that I have on hand, which will come out of the, uh, the tote. Oh, that stuff is vile smelling. Oh. Push it in and twist, and that's locked. There's one fitting. Oh, that's terrible smell stuff. I think I need to take this on outside to do the rest of this. Poisonous. Oh yeah, that's bad stuff. I'm taking that outside for the rest of this. This is. Bad, bad, bad stuff. <laughs> Chris is over here putting in insulation. Thank you, Chris. Good, no Looking very good. He's finishing the wall here in the uh, off grid water and battery bank shed. And I'm in the process of removing this water tank and connecting this water tank which will be a separate video I don't know if you'll see it before or after this one but anyway that's what's going on and he's just finishing that up and then we're gonna put in the last board there and then I will be uh, helping him to put in the uh, that board and then I'll be putting in the water tank next to this one so it's a lot of stuff going on today alright everybody what I'm doing now I've had this PVC fitting uh, sitting out here. Now I've got all the connectors. I had to go through a whole lot of connectors and adapters. Um, let me see. Oh, I'm going to need PVC from here. And then that'll come to a piece that goes into here. Okay. So I've got to put this onto here, onto here. And then I can go inside and figure out after that how the uh, PVC pipes are going to work out and how they're going to fit. Just putting on some Teflon tape to make sure that no uh, leaks occur. Oh, I'm just ripping that. It's ripped. I'm going to put two rows on because the... Uh, why is it ripped? It's annoying. The threads, you just never know how loose they are or how tight. This is super thin stuff anyway. So this goes into here, into the gator lock. 
And we'll want to tighten that up. I'm going to have to get a uh, pipe wrench, of course, and get that done really, really tight later on. And then some more Teflon tape here. And we can add the PVC pipe fitting. Again, I'm going two times around because this stuff is super thin anyway. I know it's probably overkill, but I overkill everything I do. And then this goes on here. And of course, I'm going to have to do all the exact same fittings for the second tank when I get that far. All this goes on here. If that Chinese adapter would have just worked in the first place, I would have been happy and lucky and everything would have been fine, but it didn't. Let's see how tight I can get that with my hand. Okay. And then I've got to measure my uh, PVC, so I'm going to put the PVC fitting in this next and then measure my pipes to come out of there. I'll be back in a minute. There's another piece. This piece goes on this piece. And then I can connect the PVC pipes in between. So I'll torque these all up with a pipe wrench. Right now I'm just sitting out here in the air at the table showing you some video as I put these together, giving an idea what I'm doing here. I'll tighten them all up offline. Oh, I gotta do this one too. Now this is the piece that then goes to the final PEX line, which goes to the tiny house on wheels. There was no simple way to do it with what they had at the local hardware store, so I dealt with what I had, what I could get available. I am not going to do this on the internet anymore and try to order junk online for now. Because that didn't work out last time at all. And that goes in there. So now what we've got is this massive concoction that hangs onto the edge of the tote, which will come to a PVC line, which will come to uh, all of these pieces here, okay, which will eventually run out into the tiny house on wheels. So actually this doesn't come out here. From here I'm going to come out to an elbow, a T adapter I should say. I hope I have it the T adapter. Yeah, I do. Which runs out to a fitting to outdoors for the for gardening for water hose a garden hose outside, and then from the uh, other side the T adapter is going to come to another one of these. There's a quick disconnect coupling here, and then um, another one of these fittings to another quick disconnect coupling. To eventually at the end this piece at the end of the line, and that's where then the tiny house on wheels connects all of that. So, I'm going to start cutting my elbows and my fittings to make that all go together. So now it's time to put this on here and see. Um, all the way open. Put this in here. I'm going to give that a wipe down. Yeah, I'm going to give that a wipe down. Be back in a minute. So, Clean that as well as I can. Now I'll take my gator lock. It goes on there, nice and tight. Give it a little pressure, although I don't, don't think it needs it because these just neatly uh, pull that right in and tight. And then lock, lock. You hear the two locks snap in place, and there you have it. And you've got yourself a nice tight seal. So now I can measure out the PVC lines and uh, hook this all together. Hey everybody, just 
sizing it up and piecing it together. Nothing's glued, nothing is attached yet. What I've got is the gator coupling all to all my adapters down to PVC, to an elbow to come down, to a quick disconnect coupling, to a valve, and then over to a end cap, a cutoff, for future expansion to go outside to some more water tanks for summer use. And I'll have a valve over here, but that's future expansion. Then I've got a T, and then from there I come over to the other water tank and up to the exact same setup over there. And all of that plumbing I do have. And then I've got on the very end this piece which will come onto the end of the other water tank and the hose connection which goes to the tiny house on wheels. So right now Chris has just finished the insulation. Thank you Chris. And now we're going to put that board, those boards up so that uh, we can start putting in this water tank and I can finish the plumbing. Hey everybody, we're putting in the last board up here. Uh, Chris, I wonder if you can perch on this end of this. No, it's up in the air. Let me do it. This is going to be fun trying to hold this up and getting it in place. Because there's uh, no room over here. Yeah, I know. To get into. Now, I cut this a tiny bit shorter on the top so we wouldn't have any problems like we did with the last one. But I think we're going to be okay. Okay. We're dead. Now, I think we're good. Is that tight on the bottom? Maybe yeah. you can pull it in at the bottom. Hold on a minute. Let me get the nail in the top while I'm here. Can you push hard right here? Because I'm, I'm lined up here. Yes, thank you. Get that one in. Alright, now let's see if the top, if the bottom, if we, can you squeeze that in from over there? Can you? Can you reach it? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Alright, forget it. It's not moving. Watch yourself. Alright. Well, that's the last board on this wall, guys. And we can put in the water tanks. Once I get this all done on this side, of course eventually we'll have to close it off all that down there and then I'll have to worry about my electronics because right now it's well ventilated and when I do that I won't be. I figure we got a few months before I have to worry about that. Alright Chris? Yeah. Yeah, if we get that cold in time soon, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We've got a lot more to worry about than that then. Yeah. I have seen a freeze at this time of year. It happens. Or getting a sudden snow come down from Canada. Fun part's gonna be going down underneath to get in there. Yeah. Get those nails in. So it's looking good, everybody. We're getting it. Bit by bit. Everything's coming together. So, now, let me put a nail in there, yeah, the bottom is the most important because of mice, mice and uh, ants. So, we're going to need these, 
Well, everybody, now we're going to start putting in the water tank, and then I can f finish the plumbing. <laughs> 